All kinds of amazing pattern designs can be created in Photoshop by using combinations of gradients as well as pattern layers and using apply image. I want to show you how. Let's go back to a very basic set of layers. These layers are just gradients. All you need to do, go to layer and new and layer, click OK and then go to the gradient tool. So with the gradient tool, just apply a basic gradient. Very simple and you've got this set of designs. Well, you can combine them. Well, you can combine them, of course, by using layers down here, just change the blending modes, but you can also go and use apply image. I'm gonna apply it to a layer. So a layer and new and layer. This layer will be blank, completely, utterly blank. Click OK. But it's gonna use these layers. So image and down to apply image. So image menu and apply image. Select that. And you can see the result there. That's just a basic one using, and it's applied to this layer. These layers are used. The moment it's merging the layers. But as you've got layer four, you can see layer four there, layer three, you can just select them. And you can say, you know what? I wanna go with that one, that one, layer two, and so on. And you can also change the channel, so RGB, or just use the red or green or blue aspect of that gradient. And you can also change blending modes. Now I'm gonna go with difference. You can see as I change that, you can go from dark and multiply. I like difference, so I'm just gonna go with difference there. You can also modify other settings, opacity, etc. I'm using layer two, and that just fills the layer four with that gradient. At this point, not much has really happened. So click OK. And you've got layer four. Now you could, of course, create another gradient, many other designs to it. But what you can do, just go simply back to image and apply image again. And this time, you can see if I go with layer two, which of course is exactly the same as layer four, and I'm using blending mode of difference, obviously it's black. There is no difference. But if you change it, go to red, you can see the result of that. So you can create another design. And once you're happy with that, you can say click OK at this point. And you can see you can build up some very interesting designs just by combining multiple times. So again, image, apply image. And you can see the result of that using red this time or green or blue. But you can also go and select a different layer. So this time go with layer one. So go to layer one. And maybe because there's no, obviously the blue is virtually nothing, there's no change. I'm going with layer one and green and difference and click OK. And you can see you can build up very complex designs just by using this. But what you can also do is you go to the libraries panel. Library panel has got a great feature, one of the best and hidden features, I think, of Photoshop. Simply go here, libraries panel, and that's in the window menu. And you can go down here to the plus, little plus there, and there's extract from image. You might see it as something else. It might be create from image or something else like that. It has changed its name. So extract from image, click there. And once you've done that, it goes in here and you've got patterns. And you can see you've got patterns here. You can run through the different patterns. I'm gonna go with that one. But you can go through a whole range of different pattern designs can be created simply by going along here, as long as you select patterns. And you can reposition this, move it around. Now, as you move it around, you can see you've got transparency. That's just this image there just shifted off, so you end up with some transparency. You might not want that, so just make sense, just position it like that. And you can change the scale. And as you do that, you can see more or less. You can also rotate. And again, you might get some transparency kicking in. You can always avoid it just by simply changing the settings and save to CC library. Unfortunately, it doesn't automatically save it as a layer. It'd be a great feature if it did, but you can do it the next step. So save to CC library and close. So you've got your design there. Well, that design can be used here and combined. So simply just go here to the library and just drag, just drag it across and you've got your design. And you can see it's a pattern fill layer. Pattern fill layers are special layers. They've got nothing in. 
So if you try and combine that with the other layers, it will not work. You need to convert it to a smart object. So what you do, I can, before I do that, I'll just double click that and just show you pattern layer. You can modify it. You don't have to go with that setting, of course. You can turn around and say 50. You might like 25. Really up to you. Change the angle and click OK. But what you can also do is you can go to layer and you can go down to smart objects and convert to smart object. So now it's converted smart object. Now you can combine it using the apply image. And I'm just going to use this layer four. Now I probably more sensibly if I renamed layer four, but I'm just going to keep that. That's the one I'm going to use to combine. So select it, make sense selected. And that's the key thing needs to be selected. Go to image and then down to apply image. So again, apply image. And this time you can see you've got this source, all the various settings. You've got pattern fill there. Now it's a smart object now. Before, if it hadn't been converted, you wouldn't be able to use it. Well, there's a few things you can use, but not enough to really for the color. So pattern fill. And now what you can see, you've got this design. So you can turn around and say, well, I've got green there. I can go with red. I can go with RGB. I can go with blue. So you can try out loads of different ones. It's a pity there's no randomized feature. It'd be really nice because when you build up five, 10, 15 layers and then combine with the channel as well as blending modes, it would be brilliant if there was a randomized feature. There isn't. Sadly, you just have to try it out, go through it, and you can see now you've got this. So layer four, click OK. And you combine that, that pattern fill with that. Well, what you can do now Exactly the same as before. You can turn around and say, oh, you know what? I'm going to take some of that, that layer four. So again, go over here to the library and down to the plus again, just down the bottom, that plus and extract. Extract from image. Now it's a slightly more complex design this time. And you can see the result of it. You can see very fine detail now. And you can move that around, change the scale again. And as you do that, you can see the result of that. You can create literally millions of different designs by just moving this around, reposition it, change the rotation. I'm not going to do that. And save to CC libraries. You can build up enormous amount of designs just in your libraries panel over here. Unfortunately, it puts it where you're currently located. It doesn't put it at the bottom. So you'll suddenly see it, introduce it there. As before, you can just drag it over. And you can see now you've got this design. It's on top at the moment. Always puts it on top. And again, you can, if you want, and I'm just going to do that, make sense it's a layer, go down to smart objects and convert to smart object. So it's converted, drag it below the layer four, and that's the one I'm going to combine in the apply image. So that one there. Now I don't have to just use that. What I can do, because it's a smart object, I can go and add some smart filters. Could also add probably adjustments, lots of things. So filters. And go down there and again one of these ones you could go blur distort go for 12 so i'm just going to go for one and you can see what happens you distort design there click okay now let's just deselect that so you can see the design there that's the <coughs> the design i'm going to be using so there it is that's the layer i want to use in the apply image so again go to image and apply image well, once you've done that, you've got pattern fill there. Now I don't want to use pattern fill one. I could still of course use that. I could still combine that multiple times in different combinations. But I can now go for pattern fill two. And you can see the result there of pattern fill two. It's there, got smart filter. You could get rid of the 12. You could maybe apply another effect. Again, RGB, you've got red, you've got green, blue, you even got filter mask. You've got loads of options, which is obviously not going to be in the US, but I'm just going to go with the RGB, but I just thought I'll show you that one. And of course, you don't have to use difference. You could go through the others, just try them out. You might like that one more than the other one. Overlay, difference, darken. I'm just still sticking with difference, but you could use others. And then click OK. And then you've got the result there. Now, what you can then do you might turn around and say, well, with layer four selected, 
I can apply effects to that. Now it's not a smart object. I don't want it as a smart object. But I want to use it as just a normal layer. So with that, I can go to filter and I can go to stylize and any effect you apply at this point is a destructive effect. So you've got what you've got and it's applied to layer four. And you can set the stylization cleanliness. I really like the oil paint. Wish there was more algorithms involved in it, more variety, but still it is a very useful little tool. And you can apply it once, twice, three or four times. You might like to go to image and adjustments and levels. I always like to brighten things up. I always think that it sort of makes it a bit duller. So you can go there and click OK. So you've got that design now. Or you can still combine these other threads. Or, as before, you can go over here to your libraries panel, go down to the plus again, always go down there and extract from image. And this time you've got even more complexity to work with. And you can see this time you've got that lovely twirl there and you can move it around, change the scale and you can see the result of that. And again, you can change rotation, try out some of these other ones. A variety of different designs can be created. Save to CC library, again, that is state, stored away in your libraries. Close and you've got that design there. And again, just drag it over and you see you've got that design now which of course, still pass and fill that. Double click, double click at any time, and then you can change the pass and fill. So you can go and set that to say 25, make it smaller, or 50 or 100, or 500. Click OK. Move it down again. That's the key thing. Always just put it below that layer, and you've got that design. Go back to that layer, and then you can use that. So image, and again, down here, apply image, in this case, you've got pattern fill three, and you can see the combination there to create even more unusual color designs. And I'm using like la ah, layer mask. Ah, made a mistake. What you need to do, and that shows you why you have to convert it into a smart object. You have to convert it into a smart object because it will just leave you with the layer mask if you just use it without doing that. Pattern fill's got nothing in it. It's just a construct that's obviously got pattern scaling and rotation. There's nothing in it as far as Photoshop's concerned in terms of a normal layer. So again, go to layer and then get down to smart objects and convert to smart object. Once you've done that, again, go back there, which is the steps I should have done, and then go to image and apply image. I knew I'd do it somewhere during this video. And you can see pattern fill three and then you've got the design there and again you can see now you've got rgb you've got red you've got all the things as before and then you can select that and click ok and you've got your design of course once you're happy with it once you you could save it go to file and save save as and you can just save the entire set of designs you could of course just drag it over into the layers so into the libraries panel to store it away there as well. That's another great thing. But I'm also just going to go to layer and I'm going to flatten the image. I think that's a reasonable set of layers applied and combined. And you can see the approach. And this can be done with any type of image. You can use gradients, a great start point, but you could use brush strokes, you could use text. A whole load of different designs can be used to create all kinds of end very abstract, I agree, results. And again, filter, always my favorite, oil paint. Just apply it, oil paint, just to make it slightly, I think that looks nicer. And again, image and adjustments and levels, just to brighten it up a bit. After, let's just move that just down there. That's just like what I want, and click OK. And of course, you could save that. Go here to the plus, and again, extract from image to create another pattern design, or maybe turn it into a shape, or use it as a brush stroke, or as a texture, and much, much more. If you've got any questions, please let me know in the comments. Have you used this libraries feature? Have you used the extract from image? I think it's a great feature. Do you think it's a great feature? What other things would you love to see in it? I mean, I think I can think of lots of things I would love to see available that. 
obviously it'd be brilliant if you could save materials and substances to it. I would love to see that. That would be a superb feature just from here. And also, any other questions? Thank you much. Bye.